Hello, welcome to another episode of the channel. Um, this one covers a demonstration game me and Alex put on at um, the Border Riva show at Gateshead International Stadium uh, just on Saturday, which was the uh, 17th of September. Um, it's a little, initially I thought what we'd do would be sort of an after action report on the game. Um, that didn't really pan out primarily because of uh, public engagement, which was really good. We, um, we got asked lots of questions. There was lots of interest in the game, which is great. So it's going to be a little bit of a mishmash. Uh, I'll go through some photos, a couple of video snippets, um, and I'll just cobble it together and we'll go from there. So uh, have a look at it um, and see what you think. Um, first off, I'd like to uh, give a shout out to a, uh, a couple of channels. Um, one you're probably already familiar with and I'm already a subscriber, uh, Wargaming World. Uh, I'll put a link in the in the description. Uh, this is a really good channel. It's a, a guy relatively local to us. I think he lives uh, uh, Chesley Street, which, is, which isn't that far from here. Um, met him for the first time at the show. Really nice bloke. Had a good nutter. Um, so definitely check out uh, that channel. Um, as I've said, the link will be in the description. Um, the second one's um, a channel called Retract of Man Cave. Again, link will be in the description. Um, this is a guy who um, does a number of modeling things, not just wargaming. Um, however, when I've looked at his, uh, his, there's one just being published on the Border Riva show, uh, giving an overall view of the show. Uh, and it's actually quite, it, it's well, quite, I'm saying quite good. It's really good. Um, he's obviously got the, the, um, Technical aspect really well covered. It's very well edited, proper titles, everything. So uh, definitely have a look at his channel. And if you went to the show, have a look at the um, video. Another one uh, worth subscribing to. So at the show, we had a, um, we put a demonstration game on, as, as I've already mentioned, uh, twenty millimeter Falklands. Um, I titled it uh, "Crossing the Start Line," and basically, it's a very small portion um, of the battle. Uh, at Darwin Goose Green at the uh, beginning of the uh, of the land engagements. Um, it's covering uh, five platoon, which uh, is is uh, from B Company. Uh, their their assault on a small Argentine pos position uh, at the beginning of the battle. It's still night time, uh, so it's still dark uh, during the first part of the advance to contact. Um, they were uh, they assaulted a position. Uh, in an area called Coronation Ridge. Um, so that's what it's based around. And basically it's a, a British airborne platoon assault and a sort of a, maybe a reinforced Argentine section. Um, so that's what the uh, that's what the game covers. Um, as I've said, we'll uh, get down to some footage now. As normal, if there's any questions, just, um, just drop us a line. I will say it's a little bit... Um, cobbled together so it doesn't cover the whole game um but at the end uh at the end of the the videos when i uh come back on i'll quickly run through what actually um what actually happened during the game so you get some uh some idea of uh of how the game went okay cheers right to start off with we've just got a couple of photographs uh from the game setup Right, so this is an overview of the table, uh, just basically on setup. Um, you can see the British platoon there laid out. Uh, this is looking from the British start line up the table, uh, past a couple of flocks of sheep there, um, looking towards the Argentine position uh, on the high ground. Uh, because of the Falklands, we've already got some penguins there in the foreground, uh, and looking out across at the Argentine position. Okay, Alex has uh, deployed his platoon, so he's got two sections forward, platoon headquarters in the middle, uh, section in the rear, looking up towards the Argentine position. Right, so this is uh, this is at the start of the game. Um, uh, we did obviously record sound, but because of the general hubbub of the uh, of obviously the um, 
uh, the visitors couldn't really make it out. So basically what what's happened, this is a, a turn. So, you know, as I've said, we're using fine modern. So we're flipping the cards over uh, and activating, activating the various units. Uh, as you can see, uh, the platoons come forward a little bit. And Alex has also moved his reserve section through past the platoon headquarters. Um, the uh, the way the, the spot works, and this would have been night time, it's quite it's basically very difficult to spot uh, if you if you are outside at twenty four inches at night. There's no chance of you of you spotting someone providing they're not opening fire or doing something uh, uh, very poorly with regard to the night aim discipline. Um, so Alex is moving to within um, uh, twenty four inches. The um, section you can see on the right. Um, I think I'd managed to spot them and I'd put a little few suppression points uh, when I opened fire. Uh, so that's what's happened there. I think I've activated a, a squad there in one of the trenches. I'm just measuring the distance to see uh, to see what the what the sketch is for um, for opening fire. Um, regulars will know I really like this rules system, and I've uh, there is a rules review uh, uh, on the channel. It works really well. Um, you tend not to get ridiculous things happening. Um, you do require some markers on the table, as I've mentioned in previous videos. Uh, I'm not keen on having bits of cardboard with things written online on the table, so I've we just did some markers for things like hidden units when they're activated, uh, uh, suppressive fire, and things like down and pinned uh, and things like that. So that's what we're uh, what we're doing at the moment. Uh, game progressed um initially i was uh hoping that i'd be able to get some suppression on them however it didn't really pan out like that so i'll uh, i'll cut off here and uh we'll watch a little bit more of what's happening and then we'll go to some more uh, some more scenes right and what we've got up coming up next are some uh photographs the first one is when i've initially opened fire on uh, alex's section and I've put, you can see there, I've put seven suppression points on them. Um, the little marker is to signify that this section's down on the ground. Um, so this was the first part, the first sort of when action started. Right, and what we've got up next is a couple of views uh, of the Argentine positions uh, at the beginning of the battle. Uh, so these are, this is really before everything's kicked off uh, and just some. Uh, some shots of the troops. Right and here, we've got a, a shot of me Argentine machine gun team with masses of suppression on them when Alex has uh, when Alex has hammered them. Moving on, this is his section closed right in. This is where my casualties were. You can see masses of suppression. Uh, bad day for the uh, for the Argentines. This is another view. Uh, you can see the amount of suppression there. What you got? Seventeen suppression on three men. However, they were all casualties anyway. With the result of the very effective uh, shooting from the British section. Right. So when this was happening, I tried to get me uh, the small command element I had across to. Uh, a section that had a lot of suppression to try and uh, motivate them a little bit, uh, not with any great deal of success, unfortunately. And this view here is uh, a section uh, that have been severely hit by the British, haven't sustained casualties, however, they're suppressed. They've got what have we got 18, 20 points of suppression on the three man unit, so they have had to fall back and they're over the hills and far away. I think. Um, so what we've got coming up next is a little section uh, that Alex recorded and basically it's um, some visitors to the show um, just asking us some questions about the rules. It's only a couple of minutes. Uh, the sound quality isn't great but if you just bear with it um, and just um, and just watch it and then I'll jump in at the end with the roundup on the video. 
thing on the floor of the top Mallow house, which is a mountain art and warfare corner. That's a cracker, you can virtually no figures, both reasonably good quality. Um, and that's everything we've played it. It's virtually mirrored what actually happened. I, I, I was riveted to that, and I just thought, yeah. Logic team just sat in hell for two minutes. Yeah. Let's load of lights in the gates. Just uh, go with the ship. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was. Sat there. Sat there. Te te technically, when you read about not to have an OP out, not to have sentries out, and that's an scenario. It's true, yeah, just it's a it's rescue for disaster. I mean, it's the not some of the Yeah. Yeah. I knew it was. But it's, it's a lot of it, all of this is it's the, the troop quality players are good. So if you've got elite troops on, I think they get six activation, so they can do a lot more and they get other advantages. So I've done these as sort of regular veterans. Uh, you've got to be careful with how you do that because that can, they get a lot more advantages. I mean, once these guys are suppressed, so they're suppressed, if I activate them next turn instead of four activation points, they get one. So all they're going to basically be able to do is get rid of a point, and they've got so many that they're not going to be away. They'll be away next turn. How many troop types is that? Um, so you've got a, they've got like a basic insurgent type who isn't trained. There's then like tier one insurgents, so that would be maybe Al Qaeda and Iraq, some more, a bit more, a bit more disciplined, a bit more motivated. Conscripts, regulars. You can vary that with putting a veteran quality on them. Then you've got elites. But when you look at the rules, it's easy to adjust the screen. So you're, if you're doing it... Because elites are... Well, the way I look at it, in this, in this scenario, you're looking at, you're looking at maybe, maybe 22 certain units in uh, three parada patrol section. Patrol company, you were very switched on. Maybe it's them. Um, Indochina, you're looking at your... Maybe it's foreign legion Paris. You could possibly do that. You've, but it's a... You've got to suck it and see, so if you want, play a game and see how it plays out. See, I mean, to, to me, it should have been. Right, so there we have um, the footage. Um, as, I, as I always say, it's normal sketch. If you've got um, any questions at all, drop us a line. I'll do my um, best to answer them. If you enjoyed the video, please like it. Um, if you're not already a subscriber, you know, think about subscribing. It gives uh, me and Alex a little bit of incentive to uh, keep pushing them out. Uh, you can do that through the main channel page or alternatively at the end of the video in the bottom right hand corner, there's a small button displaying a 20 millimeter modern Empress British infantryman. You can click on that um, and you're subscribed. So the battle basically, uh, as I mentioned, and as you've probably picked up from the, um, from the images, we had a British platoon, um, which Alex was controlling. So he had... Um, three sections in a platoon headquarters and I had a reinforced Argentine uh, section uh, on the on the high ground. Um, it was night time so obviously the um, uh, spotting becomes a lot more problematic. Um, Alex uh, arguably quite rightly did a standard British Army uh, platoon advance so he had two sections forward, platoon headquarters in the middle uh, section and reserve at the back. Um, didn't actually manage to spot him until he was basically, I think, I think it was about about twenty four inches away. Which is in this system that we use, fighting in modern, that's probably um, as soon as you're going to be able to spot them, uh, given the dice modifiers. Um, so anyway, I spotted. Uh, from my perspective, I spotted the right hand uh, section. Uh, open fire on them. My plan was to um, basically use suppressor fire to try and get some suppression points on them and slow them down. Uh, I wasn't confident that my uh, section of Argentine conscripts were going to withstand uh, a platoon attack from fire platoon to para. Anyway, um, so uh, I got a little few, not masses of suppression on them, it didn't have a massive effect. Um, and then what we had, once he got, he, he started to spot us, um, using his fire and movement, uh, he started banging away. It, uh, initially, he opened fire on the, um, had a, um, a Jeep MG machine gun team, um, which he absolutely hammered with suppressive fire. Um, I think he put something like 20 suppression points on them, which was um, basically, they were then classed as being under fire. They were also classed as suppressed, 
and they had to do um, a morale check, which they failed, uh, causing them to fall back. So they fell back about eight inches. Um, this was the normal run of events, um, and uh, a couple of the uh, a couple of the of my sort of fire teams on the uh, on my left flank, um, you gain hammered with um, with suppressive fire, uh, uh, causing them to fall back as well. Uh, and to cut a long story short, I ended up with um, uh, three uh, three casualties. Uh, and basically, probably three of the four fire teams had uh, withdrawn, uh, and the fourth one basically surrendered. Uh, they'd obviously had enough. Um, uh, other than a lot of suppression points, I didn't manage to inflict any casualties on him. Now, a lot of war gamers uh, will think, "What? There was no, there's no casualties." My view of um, fire team modern. One of the things I really like about it is that. Um, you get realistic results. The results that were had there during the game virtually identically married what actually happened in the engagement. Um, units, particularly conscripts, aren't going to fight the last man. They either withdraw, bug out, or they surrender. Um, and I thought the system, uh, on a personal note, worked really well. Um, so that's what the sketch was. Um, it'll definitely be worth... Uh, when we're getting the new house, when we get the uh, the new war game and den set up, uh, doing a proper after action report on it, uh, like we did with Top Mallow House, uh, and that'll give you a bit more flavour. Um, but certainly for the future, big shout out to the organisers for the Border Riva show. Uh, very well organised, really well done. It's a small show, but it's a nice show, nice atmosphere. Um, so if you if you're up here next year, I'm sure there'll be a show on next year. Um, please drop in. Okay, so that's it for now. Thanks very much for watching and we'll catch you next time.